Yo, 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 what's up, um, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, web, Twitter, wherever you're seeing this video from, man. Just had, um, just wanted to post a quick video, um, you know, it's a few different things I wanted to discuss as I go through this thing with, uh, Rock Rollers, you know, this is, uh, Rock Roller information, um, if those of you don't know, I have a Rock Roller, my boy Apollo is, um, Four, four years old um the first thing is the weight the weight of rock rollers people always you know, oh da, 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 da. He's, he's 150 pounds he's, he's 170 pounds well just blah jay i said those are the type of rock rollers that you know because a human human being is being greedy want to have the, the biggest and best of things the, the biggest the biggest dog is not going to be the healthiest dog so you, you know if your rock roll is more than about 130 pounds then I mean, you, you're risking a lot with the raw roller. Your raw roller is um, prone to uh, hip dysplasia and stuff like overweightness that that causes that. So even though you think, oh, he looks he looks you know bulky, whatever that that causes. I keep my dog relatively slim. Uh, Apollo here's like 10. He carries like 105 to 110. He bounces around uh, during the year. Uh, on the high end, I won't let him get over you know 115 because I, I I like him slim because he he runs with me. We go through, we do, you know, different things. He, when we hiking, and you know, I just I want him to be, you know, fast. I want him to be able to go, 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 and that's what he do. He likes to jump, and I keep him light, I keep him slim. That's that's the type of, you know, that's the type of rock roller I like. Yeah, you know, not like, you know, not not too skinny, but you know, just just enough. He, you can see his muscles, you know, you see his muscles on the sides and of him. He's not one of those big, big bulky looking things that look, you know, they look like they can't breathe after they play around for a little bit um all right and number two i'll say let's talk about uh you know people that don't really know much about like rock rollers they the first thing they ask you when you're selling puppies is oh these these german or american and they have no idea what they're talking about man it's like looking at a person he's german or american you have no idea what you're talking about all right so first of all if that, that's cleared us up if you're born in American, you're American. If they're born in German and, and you know, and sent over, they're German. Most majority of Rottweilers you see over here is gonna be American Rottweilers. Unless you get a adult that you bought from overseas or something and got it shipped over here. It's American Rottweiler. But um, you know, some people that actually did some type of research, they know um we're talking about something bloodline. And um it's cause you know through the history, they try to put a stain a little bit on like American um, American bloodlines, which is, there's no such thing as American bloodlines. The Rock Rollers origin originated they original from a you know a Roman original from a Roman uh, massive type dog, but you know when they became the Rock Roller, quote unquote, there was a Rock Roller, Rock or Rock Roller, or whatever you call it, um, in Germany, and you know that's when they became popular. Of course, they were almost extinct, and then breeders brought them back. Originally, they were popular for something else, but you know, as a herder, a herder type breed, and and now they they brought back popular for you know protection breed and you know and show dogs also. Um, so all of them originated, the origin, all the ones you see them originally from Germany. You know, you got poor breeders, you got bad. I mean, you got good breeders, you got poor breeders, uh, and then that's where you go. And uh, honestly, money wise, they ain't really gonna tell you if it's a good breed or a bad breed because you go, you can go see a strong, fully fit dog. But looks like a pug in the face, and, and they're charging people paying you know two, three grand for that dog, just because of the body. But you, if you leave that dog outside too long, that dog's gonna overheat because that dog doesn't have the the nostril that it's supposed to have, like original raw raw, and that dog can't run as far as the other dogs it can't play as much as you know the authentic rock raw that I think you know ones with a you know a nice broad whatever. But the raw raw is supposed to have you know. Pretty pretty good size head. You get those small head rock rollers and want to start looking like a lab in the head. That's from poor breeding as well. But um, yeah. But you know, about ten years ago, they started to say, "Oh, that's a that's what American red rock roller looked like." Those you know those lab looking rock rollers. And then they're like, "No." And then they, that little pug looking. There was a German. No, not it's just a rock roller. All rock rollers are rock rollers. It's not it's not you know a German rock roller, American rock roller. It's a rock roller. You know, you have an AKC. You know look that they they tend to go for you have a ckc look that they tend to go for which is a, all all the registrations are roughly the same a little bit different of uh, you go to germany it's a, i think it's a 
80, I can't, I can't remember, but you know, there's a little bit different. Of course, they like the tails on um, over here. Most of them relatively about the same. Um, the coloration is going to be the same. That's what I love about the rock rollers. You can tell the rock roller when you see a rock roller. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, when you're, when you're, what registration wise you want, you want to know the purebred, uh, and you know, cause that, that's going to feed into the cost as well. Cost is going to be my, my next thing. But, um, yeah, so just, just, you know, always ask to see the parents and as well as how old are the parents, you know, that, that has to do with cost too on me, but you want to see what the parents look like, both of them. Um, I personally think the most important thing, uh, with rock rollers is the temperament, not so much, you know. Where, where they were born yeah uh, you know, there's some great rock rollers that come that come from south america a uh, serbia was the the bigger ones the ones that were like 140 150 big head rock rollers those are you know the bigger ones so wanted to clear the air about that all right so three is the cost and i'm not talking about the cost of like purchasing one okay so you know that's a whole different ballpark but just to clear that up um for purebred i mean you're paying good money for these dogs i mean for a purebred rock roller you're paying you paying at least five hundred dollars for a purebred rock roller, and you know you, if you're paying five to the seven hundred dollars for just a purebred, if you're registered, you know uh, CKC, you're looking at more than you know eight to twelve. AKC, you're looking at a thousand to three thousand. Even some want to go go all the way up to five thousand dollars for these dollars. So you paying all this money for it, you want to make sure you minimize the cost of having one because these these are big dogs, cost a lot of money. I know some people do like the raw feed. My personal opinion, that is very expensive. And they're going to tell you all over YouTube, um, which I'm not saying like fully kibble, just kibble only. And this is what they eat, kibble, 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 kibble. Because I feed my dogs kibble. Um, I think that's the best route. And then I give them raw food from time to time, you know. I mix it in, you know, especially egg. Egg, I like, I like to keep egg. Every, I pop an egg in there every, every other day, really. Um, just to, you know, keep the, it keeps their, their fur looking nice and, and stuff like that, so. But I think that's the best route, cost efficient. And my dog is healthy. My dog, I've been four years. My dog never been to the vet for you know some some critical injury. And hey, he's never even been hurt. Never even been hurt. You know, some people always they get these big fancy looking dogs and and they pay all these vet fees because these I ain't gonna say fancy looking. I'm gonna say fancy costing. Fancy costing. Those are the pug looking rock rollers. Man, you get those. You paying a thousands and you already paying thousand dollars for the dog and you paying thousands and thousands for the dog vet fees because the dog ain't right the dog ain't right and then these you know what they say backyard breeders the ones that don't really care about the dogs um keep that in mind too um that's part of the cost too temperament i i'm breeding my dogs a few times for temperament i think i got the best tempered dog ever when it comes to meeting people dogs and everything i those are pets, you know. Some, some. I, I think Rock Roller should be a strong, strong dog that can protect the family, but that is also a family dog, you know, that you can have around the kids and you don't have to worry about anything like that. So many people that they, they got, they got you thinking Rock Rollers are just evil because they tied them in the backyard and they wouldn't let them see anybody, and so now they just, you know, every time you, every time you get around them, and that's. That's not what it's supposed to be, man. That's definitely not what it's supposed to be. I do not recommend that at all. Um, those type of people should not be breeders in the way the ones that top dogs in the backyard and to a little chain and you have, you know, four dollars, fifteen dollars across in them chains and you don't you, you never walk them. And my thing is you pay you're paying for, for if you're paying for a dog for me, you're paying for quality. You know? You you know that I love my dogs. I love them. The puppies that are gonna come off my dog, so that's what you're gonna pay for. So I expect my dogs to be, you know, taken care of and loved, just like I love them. And that that doesn't mean, you know, you have to sleep with them. Cause I don't sleep with my dogs. I have, I prefer my dogs have their space. I have my space, not together. You know, I know some people around here they do the. Mm -mm, I don't do that. I definitely don't do that. And I treat my dogs like my kids. You know, when you puppies, I I'm gonna have you a little bit closer than what you usually be once you're adult. You got your own space, and that's your space. And that's how I think it should be. But yeah, anyway, so, but uh, yeah, about cost, yes, I see me before I, you know, like Apollo, I had him for four years now. Uh, I wanted to make sure, you know, he didn't have any health defects because I don't really care what a piece of paper say. People always, you know, oh, I got this, um, this health screening. This, uh, people, piece of paper doesn't mean, don't mean anything to me. I like to know. I see the animal. I see the, the mom and daddy. If mom and daddy, you know, three, four, five, 
six years old and and they're they're still healthy as a bird flying around here good temperament that's a good dog you're gonna get some good puppies out there dog uh that's how i think it should be but yeah so watch that on the cost though because these dogs are like i said they are big dogs so they again get expensive so before you buy one know that it costs a lot of money to feed them um you're gonna need chew toys you know what I mean? you're gonna need uh space for them to live whether it's, if it's outdoors you're gonna need a a pen or you know or a fenced in yard or something like that if it's indoors I know some people that these are big dogs just remember that if you have them indoors 24 7 remember the big dogs they like to run around so every day you need to take them out if not they're gonna tear your house up you know that um they shed twice a year i know people don't you know that's one thing is that uh, people sometimes people don't know about rock walls i mean they don't they're not like big shedders but 24 7 but twice a year big shedders you know that paulo is actually shedding now that's why i'm not putting them on camera it's his shedding day and I just see my wife in the back. Y'all saw already. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I have for y'all today, man. Appreciate y'all for listening. Hope y'all learned something. Subscribe, like, hit, share. Thanks for slick. Thanks for um, tuning in to Slick Films. Always Slick Films Outdoors. You know, this is where I'm gonna do a lot of fishing videos and a lot of rock roller videos because those are two things I love. Um, if you're on Facebook, make sure you join the uh, Upstate Rock Rollers, man. I like the. Upstate Rock Rollers is going to be where I post my dogs at. And, um, you know, when we breed, we're going to have dogs there. When I have training lessons and anything like that, that's where it's going to be. Uh, upstate Rock Rollers. And and uh, I'm befriending uh, different breeders from around the upstate of South Carolina and uh, mid-South Carolina, like toward uh, the Columbia way. So anywhere from Greenville, Anderson, you know, uh, Columbia, and then up towards Spartanburg, anywhere from that area, breeders, uh, you know, befriending them and adding them on my page as well because I want everybody in the community to be a community and uh, show people how beautiful and how smart these dogs are. But thanks for watching. Bow.